did we create the systematic approach? Hello, this is Dr. Ali Mari. In this short presentation, I'm going to explain to you how we at Husky Home come up with the systematic approach concept. First facts. Patients visit doctors complaining of a symptom, not a disease. It's all about the differential diagnosis of symptoms and diseases and signs. This is the main focus of physicians during patients' interviews, right? OSC stations, as well as real-life patients' interviews, have limited time. Patients have no choice but to be focused and to organize the interview in a time-efficient manner. On the other hand, physicians have to be vigilant not to miss anything. Obviously, there is a need for some sort of an approach that will fulfill both patients' and physicians' goals, an approach that will explore all the patients presenting issues in a limited time frame, an approach that will protect both the patients and physicians, How did we at OSCE Home formulated the OSCE Home systematic approach? We started by preparing a list of all signs and symptoms a physician faces in real life clinical practice. We wrote one sign or symptom on a separate sheet of paper. Then for each symptom or sign, we wrote all the possible differentials. Then we drew a table, assigned a column for each differential, and wrote that symptom sign presentation details, quality, duration, relation to other symptoms, signs, red flags, etc. So we have a, a table like that with disease number one, two, three, four, and all the details of that specific symptom for that disease. Then for every detail, we wrote a question to ask or a point to examine. So the, the table looks like that now. You have diseases with the questions. Obviously there are now many identical questions and points to examine concerning this specific symptom or sign among all these differential diseases. We started to merge the diseases columns into one set of questions. When the same question or action to perform is required for several diseases, we place these diseases names between brackets after the question to help us later with the clinical decision making process. Then we arrange these questions and points to examine in a logical, easy-flowing flowchart, we have noticed that there are some details that are not required if you are just screening for a symptom and not thoroughly gathering details about it. So we divided the to-do ask list into two files. We placed the, most, the must ask do important ones up in the list for screening and the rest at the bottom for detailed data gathering subfile, and just in case we run out of time during the interview. What about communication skills? It's a major issue to ensure an easygoing interview, professional organized interview, and to achieve a mutual understanding and respect. We rephrased the questions to meet communication skills guidelines, English language issues, open-ended questions, non-leading questions, respective manners, and so more issues. Now we have all the needed questions to ask and points to examine concerning that specific sign or symptom on a separate sheet of paper. We place the sheet in a separate file, labeled it with the symptom sign name. 
Then we repeated the same process for all other signs and symptoms. So imagine now we have a stack of sheets, files with symptoms and signs, names, cough, vaginal bleeding, abdominal pain, dyspnea, headache, uh, heart racing, loss of vision, and so on. Again, there are now many identical questions or points to examine among all these symptoms and signs now. We started to gather identical questions or points to examine into a separate file box and crossed it out on that symptom sign sheet. For example, questions that medications, past illnesses, social history, and so on. Now we have three sets of basic box files. Chief complaint data gathering box file that we have to ask everyone. Then several specific symptom signs box files that we have to choose one depending on the scenario. And then standard boxes, uh, question boxes file that we have again to ask everybody. Remember, in real practice, as well as during OSCE stations, our time is limited. So we carefully went into each of these fi box files and rearranged the questions and points to examine for maximum time efficiency. We merged some, uh, rearranged some, sorted some, overlapped some, and so on. So we came up with a tree of a step-by-step -step history taking and physical file boxes. During the patient interview, you go through the file boxes one by one. You don't have to open all the boxes and ask the questions inside. You only open the box files you need. This is the model. You have few minutes, couple minutes before you go into the station or before you meet the patient in real life to gather information about him. Then you go into self-introductory, the opening of the interview. And there are specific things you have you to, and, to do and say. And then you go into the initial history taking box, which is the chief complaint, exploring the chief complaint and the history of present illness. And by now, you have an idea what's the main body organ for that uh, complaint. So you have to choose one of these stations. Open it, one of these boxes, sorry. Open it and start asking the questions. Then you go into the standard question box. Again, open it, ask the questions. Then if physical is required, again, you, you will open it. And there is similar uh, subdivided boxes, like the one with the, with the station appropriate questions, and you have to choose the body organ. And then you come out, open the wrapping up box. And you are done. Let us take an example just to imagine how the, the station flow will be. A patient presented with cough. So introductions box, five sentences to say. Previously memorized, practice. Chief complaint, 10 questions to ask. Previously memorized. No need to bother myself how to ask or whatever, what, whatever to ask. Then the HPI box, 15 questions to ask. Again, by now, I know which specific box, organ specific box, system specific box I'm going to open. For instance, here, we figured out it's a respiratory issue, not cardiac, not MSK, not GI, not psychiatric, not uh, medica uh, medication induced. So I go into respiratory boxes. Again, open it, 10 questions. Came out of it, we have standard questions, 14 questions. Then the wrap up box, eight points to explain, ready made question, uh, statements. Most of the patient's answers will be no. So, how long then will it take you to ask all these questions and wrap up the case? Five minutes, and you have covered all the guidelines and checklists.
We created similar flowcharts for the physical examination, counseling, ER stations, that with the practice and practice and practice, this is an important point, will take you just five minutes to perform. One flowchart of seven steps with 23 history taking and 24 physical examination boxes to choose one depending on the case. Don't you agree it's much more easier to memorize than about four, 500 checklists? Rest assured that all the guidelines and checks in any checklist are fulfilled including communication skills. You won't forget anything to ask, do, or explain. No need to be anxious or nervous. You will be on a relaxed autopilot mode, letting you focusing on the clinical decision process, making process and communication skills. The systematic approach took three of us a full year to finalize and eight years so far to tweak and don't you agree it's worth a try it's yours in just few minutes save your time and effort and get your copy now at www.askihome.com i hope you'll find this information valuable for you all the best for your uh, ASCII exam preparations and clinical endeavor. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.